Hey guys, Mandarin here with a 1 to 99 crafting guide for Iron Man. Even though this guide is catered to Iron Man, it'll still be helpful for non Iron Man accounts. Let's first go over some helpful items to get. You'll need to gather a lot of gems as you train, so getting a gem back is strongly recommended. The unupgraded version can hold a total of 100 gems, while the upgraded version can hold 60 of each type. You can get this at the Dungeoneering Reward Shop for Dungeoneering Tokens. A full Artisan's Outfit will give you a 6% crafting XP boost. Each individual worn piece will give you a 1% boost. You can get these as a reward from the Stealing Creation minigame. A Scroll of Dexterity can be bought with 20,000 Dungeoneering Tokens at the Daemonheim Reward Shop. With it, you'll have a chance to save an ingredient when crafting, as long as the item uses at least three of that ingredient, like bodies and shields. Using a crystal chisel will give you a 2% chance of creating an extra gem of what you're cutting. It is degradable, but it'll degrade slower if used in Prif. Okay, so for levels 1 through 20, there are three different methods you can do. There are several quests that give you crafting experience. If you're starting from level 1, Dwarf Cannon, Goblin Diplomacy, Murder Mystery, and the Observatory quest will get you to level 20. The reason why I suggest these specific quests are because they are relatively short and they have no skill or quest requirements. There are plenty of other quests that give more crafting XP with additional requirements, so take a look at the link in the description for a list of other available crafting quests you may want to do. Another option is to craft while dungeoneering. Enter a small dungeon at complexity 4 or above in order to have access to crafting. Your goal is to get money, so fight every enemy for drops and gather from chests, mineable rocks, and so on. Unless you want to complete the dungeon, I don't recommend fighting the boss if you're low level because it can take too long and may not be worth it to sell what they drop. When the dungeon is looted, return to the homeroom and sell everything to the trader. Use your money to buy as much Tier 1 proto mastic size as you can. Make sure you have enough money to buy the same amount of thread as well. Now craft the best thing you can with what you bought. Sell what you made back to the trader and keep going until you have no more money. Keep starting new dungeons and repeating the process to level. Unfortunately, the Scroll of Dexterity does not work with this type of leather but you can still earn between 11,000 to 59,000 XP an hour with this method. The reason why the XP rate ranges so much here is because it really depends on your combat level. I tried this method on a low level account and on a high level account to show the differences. Obviously with a higher combat level you'll be able to kill everything faster and gain more money at a faster rate, which means you can buy more highs at a time. This method is something you can do past level 20 as well. No matter what level you do this method at, you're always going to want to use the tier 1 hide. Anything else will be too expensive, and it'll just take longer to get enough money for. As an example, I went through a dungeon and was only able to buy 3 tier 9 hides in one trip, so it's not very efficient. The third option to get to level 20 is cutting gems you mine at the common gem rock in El Karid. The XP rate for this can be between 10,000 to 11,000 XP an hour. You only need level 1 mining to get opal and lapis, but you'll need to be at at least level 13 mining to get jade, and 16 mining to get red topaz. Your gem bag will not hold these types of gems, and they can't be used for anything too useful right now, so I suggest just cutting the gems once your inventory is full, and then dropping everything so you don't have to leave. Obviously, this isn't the best method to do to get to level 20, but it is something a little bit more AFK than the other methods, so choose whichever method works best for you. For levels 20 to 75, and even up to 99, you can cut sapphires, emeralds, and rubies that you get from the uncommon gem rock in the Alcarid mine. Unlike the common gem rock, you can use your gem bag here, so I strongly recommend having that, and an upgraded one if possible. If you have the divination level for it, you can bring signs of porters for a faster rate. If not, keep storing them in your bag and then deposit by teleporting to a bank like Birthrope and return with an archaeology journal or ring of dueling teleport. 
You can only store uncut gems in your bag, so don't cut them as you mine. You only need level 20 mining to get sapphire, but you'll need to be at at least level 27 to get emerald, and level 34 for rubies. After an hour, you can get a little over a thousand total gems here. You can also buy gems from the Anacrania Gem Store. Their stock resets every day, so start stocking up from here as soon as you can. Buy any gem that you can afford here. When actually cutting your gems, you can stay near any bank and just grab a full inventory to cut. If you have a crystal chisel, be sure to have that equipped, and then cut in prif if available. You can cut about 4,800 gems in an hour. When cutting sapphires, you can make between 240 and 255,000 XP an hour. Emeralds will get you about 322 to 342,000 XP an hour. And rubies can give you 408 to 433,000 XP an hour. These rates are just from cutting and do not include gathering materials. To actually get enough gems to cut for an hour, it would take you about 4 hours of mining. You can get diamonds and dragonstone from other gem rocks, but the rate you get gems from those are lower than the uncommon gem rock, and you'll end up making less XP per hour with everything that you get. Though if you do get diamonds and dragonstone from other means, it's definitely worth cutting them. As an alternative training method for these levels, you can make jewelry using any of the gems you cut. The XP rates for making jewelry is lower than gem cutting, but it's still a good option because you can use the necklaces to store signs of border, and you can alk any jewelry for a profit. If you're doing this method and want more XP, craft bracelets. If you want to prepare for porters, craft necklaces. The best place to craft these is the Edgeville Smeltery. You'll need to complete the Varrock Area achievements to use it, but you can check out the guide I have for that to finish it quickly. The Smeltery in Lumbridge is a good alternative place, however. You will need to mine gold as an additional material for jewelry. Starting at level 63, you have the option of gathering dragon hide from green or blue dragons to craft bodies. I suggest these dragon types so you can kill more at a faster rate. This method is only efficient with the following things. You'll need sign supporter so you can bank all dragon hide you get. Bring almost a full inventory of porters. Even though you can get dragon bones, which can be used for prayer, don't bank them because that'll take up too much time and it would make the crafting XP gain inefficient. A bone crusher would work very well here, or just bury them as you pick them up. I recommend you have a minimum of combat level 70. This way you can kill the dragons at a faster rate and can get more hide per hour. There's a level 70 agility shortcut to get to the blue dragons fast, so if you end up needing to bank to get more porters, having that level is recommended. You can fight green dragons in the chaos tunnels, but be mindful of the wilderness on your way there. I suggest turning off auto-retaliate once you're fighting them so you don't fight the baby black dragons in the area. Blue dragons can be fought in the Tavalry dungeon. If you have 60 dungeoneering, you can use the resource dungeon here for better dragon grouping. You'll be able to gather around 500 hides in an hour with this setup. Make sure to have an anti-fire potion or anti-fire shield, and any other supplies you need depending on your level. When actually crafting the dragon hide, if you have the scroll of dexterity, you should craft bodies. Since it uses three hides, it'll give the scroll a chance to activate its ability, so you have a chance of saving a piece each craft. Grab a stack of thread that you can buy from any crafting or general store, and summon the best beast of burden you have. As you craft, keep taking from your familiar to craft more at a time. You can even set this to a keybind. Assuming you have all of the hide you'll need, crafting green dragon hide bodies will give you about 297 to 314,000 XP an hour, while blue dragon hide bodies will give you around 336 to 356,000 XP an hour. When looking at the gathering times, since mining for gems is faster than fighting dragons, these rates are actually still lower than the gem cutting method. But if you alk your bodies, you can make significantly more GP than what you would make from alking bracelets, upwards to about 1.7 mil an hour. Starting at level 75, you can play the Harps and Prifts Ithil District. You'll need to complete the Plague's End to access this. You can earn between 52,000 and 65,000 XP an hour with this method. 
As I said before, the best XP rate is cutting gems, and you can stick with that all the way to 99. But if you don't want to worry about getting gems, and want something even more AFK, this is a good option. The harmonic dust you get from it can be used to make various crystal tools and weapons as well. All you need to do is click to tune the harp and you'll start playing. Your harp will gradually lose its tune over time. You'll gain less dust after 50%, but it won't affect the XP rate until it's 100% out of tune. Simply click the harp to retune it. It's best to do this during the idle hour because you'll get 20% more crafting XP from harps and a lower chance of getting out of tune. From levels 84 to 99, you can craft urns as another alternative method. There are different tier urns you can make, but from crafting the decorated urns, you can make 67,000 to 77,000 XP an hour. Once again, the XP rate is not as good as gem cutting, but the urns are useful items you'll want to use in the future to help train other skills. You'll need soft clay to make them, which can be mines from the Ithil district in Prif, or at the crafting guilds while wearing a bracelet of clay. You can craft and fire urns in these locations as well. So overall, even with the time it takes to gather them, cutting what you get from the uncommon gem rock is going to be the most efficient way to train crafting. You can even stick with this up to 120. The other methods are meant to show alternatives if you want to do something more AFK or make money while also getting crafting XP. There will be more Iron Man skill guides like this in the future, so be sure to leave a like and subscribe to see more. If there's a specific skill you want to see us work on, let us know in the comments. Be sure to check out our Twitch for live streams as well. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!